uh, Max and Dan, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, everyone in the audience also, thank you so much for joining us today to watch this film. Uh, I have so much I wanna ask you guys. I have so many questions, but, but we just watched your film. So I wanna uh, give you guys the floor. Do you have any opening remarks you guys wanna open us up with here? You wanna go first or should I, Max? I, I, can, I have, I have, I have some really, swirling really, thoughts, go for it. Just really quickly, uh, there might've been a, a few cards at the end that got cut off, one of which was that this film was dedicated to the victims of the next war. And so what we just, it for, foreshadowing what just took place in the Gaza Strip. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's one of the things I was, I was thinking, uh, I mean, I, I have, I, you know, haven't watched the documentary for, for a while, but I got to say just, you know, I've just tuned in for the last 10 minutes and I had a pretty visceral impact on me you know even though like it's it's my own work and every frame of that documentary i've seen about a billion times but having you know gotten some distance from it um you know just seeing some of those stories it's pretty it's had a powerful effect on me which kind of surprised me i mean there's there's a lot to say um what, you know what max just said is is really key you know we intentionally you know, we dedicated the film to to the victims of the next war, knowing that it was a matter of time um, before Israel carried out another slaughter in Gaza. Um, and it's kind of an eerie feeling knowing that it's going to happen again and a bunch of innocent people are going to be killed um, for, for no good reason. And they're going to be smeared or, you know, just not mentioned in, in Western media at all. And so it falls on you know, independent alternative media um, and, and you know, people like you and Amar, you know, big thanks for, for hosting this, putting it together in Massachusetts Peace Action and everyone who's tuned in. I mean, I see we have almost 200 viewers, which is um, pretty incredible to me that, you know, on a, on a Thursday, Thursday night when people have so much going on that there are 200 people, you know, who are, who are checked into Zoom to watch this documentary. Um, and, for, you know, I saw one, I saw at least one comment, someone asking, you know, if, where they can find it. We put it up on YouTube during the last assault on Gaza for free. So you can like, it's on, um, I work for an outlet called Behind the Headlines. We put it on there. Um, and it's also on Gray Zones YouTube. So you can find it on either YouTube, but I think Gray Zones has been like, um, like blacklisted by YouTube. You can't even find it if you search for it. But if you just search for Killing Gaza, at least the Behind the Headlines link will come up. And it's available in like five or six languages, um, English, Spanish, Arabic, Portuguese, French, German. And we're in the process of actually getting it in Turkish and um, Persian as well. So, you know, obviously we want as many people to be able to see it as we can. Um, you know, one of the things that really sticks out in my mind, you know, having spent, I, I was, you know, fortunate to spend about almost seven months in Gaza filming that and, and reporting over about a two, almost three year period. Um, and I haven't been able to get to Gaza since 2017, basically when I stopped, you know, when I ended filming for the documentary, um, the Israeli government press office, as you know, Max said in the, in the documentary, um, denied me credentials. And so, you know, I, I couldn't get in anymore um, and I actually tried to go during the recent assault and I wasn't able to go for a combination of reasons. One, the Israeli government press office just didn't even respond to my, basically that's why the Israeli government press office just simply ignored, um, uh, my, um, my request, my application for credentials, which would have been totally legitimate. And I had everything I needed. I just didn't hear back, which, you know, is kind of remarkable. Um, but, um, you know, one of the, one of the things that really comes to mind for me watching, especially those, that last, you know, 15 minutes or so, is I think of the young, you know, the adolescent boys who in the film who are now of age, um, who are now adults, you know, I mean, they were 14, 15 years old in their particular, um, I think of uh, um, Wasim Shamali, you know, whose brother Salem Shamali was, was murdered 
um, in that viral video, you know, and we, we kind of showed his story and I went, I went and visited him again. Um, and, you know, one of the things, you know, that you saw in the documentary is he talks about how he wants to be a fighter. He wants to join the armed resistance and, and basically get, you know, whatever justice he can for his brother, Salem, who was murdered. And that is like so many boys I met. Um, I did a, a video for the nation you can see on on youtube uh it's titled the children who live under israel's missiles and it uh it's kind of like a short documentary about the bakker boys four four of which were murdered while they were playing soccer on a beach in gaza um israel dropped a a, a couple of launched a couple of missiles at them and there were eight boys, brothers and cousins, four were killed and four survived. And, you know, anyone who was paying attention in 2014, I'm sure remembers that event. That's maybe the most, um, you know, the, the kind of most marked event of the entire attack, you know, 51 day war on Gaza. And those boys all told me the same thing, um, you know, that they all want to be resistance fighters. And so I always, you know, had this kind of image of in my head of these you know, deeply, not only traumatized boys, but, you know, kids who are physically um, damaged, you know, um, Wasim Shamali would lose his hearing, um, he would kind of, you know, the trauma was so heavy for him, he would like, you know, zone out and just kind of, you know, uh, detach from reality for periods of time. Um, in the in the, the nation video, if, you know, if anyone watches that, you can see, you um, uh, Muta the guy, the kid's name was uh, Muntasser Bakker. He has like episodes where he de de detaches from reality and basically just goes into like convulsions. Um, and, you know, he was, there was no way they could help him in Gaza. And, you know, presumably he's still dealing with that condition, but now those boys are of age where they can join the resistance. And so it would not surprise me in the slightest bit if, you know, they were in um, the tunnels during this last war on Gaza, waiting for the Israeli military to invade, um, you know, as so many young boys and even even girls, young women do um, do too. There, there are even there are uh, young women in in the armed resistance groups, and you know, so that's just the reality. It's such a severe reality that people face, um, and I think it's a really normal response that that. You know, we have to understand in the West why people take up arms um, and and not shy away and pretend that, you know, only unarmed resistance, only people marching to the border to be gunned down by snipers, you know, which which, of course, we saw in the Great March of Return, return when Israeli snipers, you know, murdered, you know, I mean, just. I can't, I don't I can't remember the exact figure, but dozens upon dozens upon dozens and, and injured, you know, 10 uh, thousands of, of people maimed them. Um, and so, you know, naturally, people are going to want to take up take up arms. And that's why not only so many young people uh, seek to join the armed resistance groups, but they have so much popular support in the Gaza Strip, and in not only the Gaza Strip, but also in the West Bank in the occupied West Bank and just among, you know, Palestinians in general, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to find um, Palestinians, particularly in Palestine, who don't support armed resistance. Um, and so, you know, I think it's a really important thing for people in the West who maybe, you know, feel uncomfortable with, with that to, to understand that it's a perfectly natural response. Um, I mean, I guess I've been going for a few minutes. I can open it up to Max, you know, turn it over to Max and then we can we can do questions.